Uh, thank you. Uh, hello, everyone. Uh, I came from China, and this week I uh, I know much of uh, Faircoin ecosystem in China. Lots of stock providers and IPFS funds in China, uh, but uh, there is there are not much uh, China engineers come here. Uh, I'm it's so pleasure to come here to exchange the ideas about uh, our son's source on IPFS and uh, Faircoin and uh, IPRD database related uh, topics. Uh, I wanted to say, um, have you been to China before? Here, no. I have to the, to the organizer of IPFS things and IPFS camp. Hopefully next year or or someday we can have an IPFS camp and IPFS things in China. <laughs> Thank you. Uh, today I will introduce the Pando project is an authorized IPLD data network. Uh, it is a kind of layer two data network of Faircoin. I'm Tao Shen. Uh, so maybe you have, you have known and the the Pando is uh, is a uh, a famous uh, 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 organic trees in the world, but uh, in the context of data network, uh, Pando here is a one tree forest. Uh, that means Pando will aggregate the huge forest of IPLD or CAD data around the Faircoin and over time. And uh, why Pando? Uh, in context of the, the big data systems, Pando is uh, uh, for the data that does not uh, meet the uh, consensus bar in the global chain. As you know, uh, for the global blockchain uh, such as Faircoin, they has uh, uh, a consensus um, for all the nodes to reach the agreement with the data. So. But for lots of streaming of the data, they don't need to meet the consensus bar of this global chain. So in the context of the big data, we have a consensus bar. As you can see here, uh, it is a big data iceberg. We, there, there are many, many data is under the consensus, con, consensus bar. So that is the scope of the panel. And the Panda project is born from a, a reputation system of a fair coin network. And there are ser several mechanisms that we can see uh, for incentivization uh, feedback loops for the open data network, for example, fair coin. You need a reputation system to uh, feedback the, the control uh, system, such as you can see here the input and the output. You can, if you take uh, the Faircoin network as a, as a control system. So Pando is a layer to data network for Faircoin reputation system that picture the Faircoin networks. You know, there are more than 3,000 storage providers in the network currently. But uh, the storage clients, they don't know which storage provider is, uh, is better how to choose the, the right storage provisors to store their data or retrieve their data. So that is why we built Pando for reputation system to build the feedback closed loop for this Faircoin open network. And from high level point of view, you can see Pando as a, a set chain metadata service or layer two data network of Faircoin. You can see this in this Web3 data network architecture, Pando is here in the uh, three layer of IPFS and Faircoin. Uh, we have uh, Faircoin nodes as a blockchain, and we have IPFS nodes as off-chain nodes, and we can also have Pando for off-chain storage service. And based on this storage layer, we can have a storage helper and logic layer for example, computation over this data, la data layer. 
So that is the big picture of this Web3 data network. Uh, there are nice properties of Pando uh, to serve as a layer two uh, data network. One, the first one is keep the included metadata consistently available uh, because uh, you know there is uh, much discussion uh, in the blockchain area is about the data availability layer uh, in the Ethereum ecosystems. So we need uh, this kind of data ability layer uh, for fair coin. And uh, the second is uh, we need a lightweight and unbiased access to the metadata. I will inter discuss the details how for uh, this, uh, how to provide the unbiased access and also with the third properties, discourage historical revisionism. Uh, all the data, all the metadata uh, history in Pando is immutable, and uh, we can track, trace the history of, of Pando's uh, records or data recording. How Pando works? Uh, the pipeline of the Pando is much simple. Uh, can, you, you can see it as an input and an output system. Um, for example, the first step is to take uh, the stream of the data and then we will aggregate this data into the car archi archives and also we will store the data in the Pando uh, storage. The Pando storage is uh, much similar with IPFS but have an uh, immutable data layer. And we currently we, we provide a lightweight query interface uh, GraphQL and uh, HTTP, HTTP access API. And then we, we can back up this data to the Faircoin. Uh, the latest discussion about the backup is we will leverage the data DOS, not only use the extra uh, uh, projects, maybe you know. And the inside the panda, we had a snapshot chain to track the changes and the histories of the uh, data. For example, you can see we have a, a low, layer, low layer HMT data structure and we have a, a kind of a, a blockchains to persistent our history. Okay, uh, let us see how Pando uh, is work on how, how is the pan, what is Pando in different scenarios. The first one is in the storage hierarchy. Uh, as you know, Faircoin is for slow, large capacity and very cheap for backup. IPFS is a kind of warm storage and for data retrieval and for a data delivery network. And but the Pando is uh, have a SQL enabled a panel is a SQL enabled data network, so it is for optimized for fast access. It's like a, it is a new database kind of database. So we think of that we will we could introduce the SQL capability to unlock Web three uh, applications. The next scenario is the reputation system. You may have seen this picture uh, very often in different places for, for the whole picture of Faircoin and uh, for storage and retrieve uh, the pipeline of the data. But here we added the Pando to the data pipeline. You can see in the left part of this uh, diagram that is reputation systems and reputation service. Pandas is uh, a uh, story layer of the reputation system you can see from there. Um, just like I have mentioned before, the story clients and the retrieval clients will, will get the metrics from the reputation system to decide to choose the, the best or better story providers. You know, Faircoin networks is not a, it's a different with other blockchain networks, it is the storage service network and the retrieval service network. 
It's different from Ethereum and block uh, and Bitcoin. Uh, different storage providers have different uh, requirements and different uh, benefit uh, requests. So they have different uh, uh, service. So repetition system could give a, a list of uh, storage providers for the storage clients and other stakeholders in this ecosystem. Okay, next one is, uh, is currently is much popular in the, with the FVM, FVM launch. Uh, how Panda is, uh, is work with the Datadog stack? As you can see, uh, we will introduce uh, data operating system between the layer two data dolls and uh, the under layer storage. For example, you can see we put the Pando, Faircoin, and PFS as the same data storage layer. Uh, we can leverage the API, FVM to build a data operating system uh, for you know a lot of frameworks for for smart contracts, and we can enable more data dolls in the upper layer, or layer two data dolls. Pando could be a server as could be a service as a immutable uh, immutable data storage for the data dolls. Okay, next one is Pando in the modern data stack. Uh, that is quite open uh, area I want to discuss all of you because uh, how to build a Web3 uh, big data systems or Web3 data analysis pipelines, that is uh, um, quite an open area to discuss. But in my view, uh, as you can see here, uh, basically we have the raw data and the transformed data, and we have the ETL process over this raw data. That means over this Pando uh, data layer. Currently we are uh, doing some prototype uh, doing a prototype based on Panto that is uh, transform two based on HTAP database. HTAP is a hybrid OLAP and OLTP. Uh, that is quite a, a new area, and uh, um, we have we have much issues and open uh, areas needed to discuss and need, need to figure out. But uh, I think that is quite available for Web three. Uh, big data ecosystems, if we can build a transformer tool based on IPLD data layer, uh, that could be very interesting. But the panel here is uh, as a data layer for this transformer tools. So for example, you can, a uh, panel could uh, create a chain of evidence for the input and output and the computation and the process, for example, and to could uh, transform the data and in, in the pipeline, but with very nice properties of transparent, verifiable, and reliable. That is uh, currently we are doing the prototype. We, can, we call it a kind of a Pando Plus over Pando. Okay, uh, let me give a short introduction about the HTAP transformation, the principle of the HTAP transformation. Uh, that is basically, uh, HTAP is combine the OLAP and the OLTP together. As you can see, the left side is for OLTP, the right side is for OLAP. Uh, there is a step one, two, three, four, uh, but for the for the row data, uh, row star layer, the data star will be synchronization uh, with the uh, column star. That means row star will be uh, real time sync with the column star. You, that could be make the OLTP very, OLAP very quickly. So that uh, there is much uh, context for this. Or, HTAP transformation. That is the latest progress in the database area. 
Okay, uh, I want to summary why Pando is useful. The first is, uh, just as I mentioned, we introduced the uh, computation layer over Pando for exec execution. Pando could ex execute a distributed E-type process, which could be dis distributed as a task on the Web2 infrastructure or backlog infrastructure. And the second is the data verification. That is the benefit from the content addressable features uh, for data input transformation process and output. The, all this process, all this pipeline is uh, built on the content addressable uh, data. And for energy and the provenance is uh, we could certify as a uh, data processing and uh, data products and pipelines and uh, by enabling uh, chains of evidence. And uh, based on the Pando, this kind of Web3 data network, uh, we could build cross-function teams, organizations, for, for example, motive DAOs and uh, cross domains on this verifiable data. So that is my, uh, our source and our progress. We have the open source GitHub, but I didn't um, put here, but you can find the uh, GitHub open source projects on our official website. That is all the key information I want to share to you. I, I'm open to discuss this open area. Thank you all, thanks. My, I think probably a lot of people in the room would be curious to hear about the places, like the mechanics of how content addressing allows you to do some of the things you talked about. And so there's a couple of that I took notes on that it would be fun to hear more about. And maybe there's more other um, parts of the data motion that do similar stuff. Um, and you mentioned a little bit here, but in the execution pipelines, um, are you using uh, determinism and memoization and caching to accelerate the second run um, for repeatable compute? Uh, currently for the computation to accelerate the reputation computation, you mean? Uh, yeah, I mean just in general for pipelines for for the data stuff. Uh, yes, for I mean for the computation um, part is uh, um, we are building uh, we are leveraging the open source H type database to build uh, build over Pando. We get the data from Pando and. Uh, and uh, calculate the aggregation data for the multi-dimension uh, data to and the stop back to to Pando. We can we can recompute the process because we have the CADs and the, and output is also CADs. We can verify mm -hmm. the computation output. Uh, regarding to the card catch, like are you able to cache the output based on the input? Maybe I think so. Is uh, we can yeah, it could be a catch layer for for the computation. Yeah, mm -hmm. we can think of that as like a catch layer, right? Yeah. I th I think that that's a sales point for all of our stuff is that we can make repeatable compute fast. Yes, 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 yes. Um, and then uh, um, on the HTAP synchronization, I think it was the next slide. Um, moving from the row store to the column store. Um, are you doing uh, in data in number three? Um, is that just CIDs? So if it's the same for the field, then it's a zero copy, or how does that work? Uh, currently, we uh, we package all these processes together, and the next step we will skip this step. Currently, the three uh, step three is uh, basically is a web two technologies mm -hmm. uh, different. Uh, uh, introduce the CAD uh, because for, for performance uh, consideration. But in future, we, we will make it a separate uh, service and on separate node to, to separate uh, synchronization. Mm -hmm. And the leverage the CAD, you can verify the input and output of step three. Yeah. Um, I guess, yeah, and then it would be interesting to hear just a little bit about like the operational challenges for doing the Filecoin scale stuff with reputation and all that? Um, for reputation data, we basically, we uh, uh, the first thing that you can think of is uh, the unchained data. 
Antony that could build a lot of repetition metrics for study providers. Uh, basically, that Antony data is uh, big data. Currently, it's about over 17, 70 tick And uh, there are a lot of often data we are cooperating with uh, Proton Labs, um, for example, retrieve metrics. Uh, lots of often metrics we need to also integrate, integrate to produce the repetition metrics. I think that is uh, combine the on-chain data with the off-chain data together. I think that is a very is a big data scenario for Web three. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.